Namaste. So it's a cool, drizzly day way up in the mountains. <laughs> you know it's cool if I'm wearing clothes, right? And uh, so I was going to go trek up to the goddess temple uh, this morning which, uh, by the way, is a proven geomagnetic and, and uh, gravitational anomaly. And, uh, but it's, it's just too misty and rainy and drippy, so I'm going to stay inside and do video today. <laughs> so the next topic in our Tantra series, The Path, talks about energy levels. Of course, uh, you remember the four by four matrix of consciousness related to the seven chakras we went over last time. Now I want to look at the seven by seven matrix of chakra energy levels and starting from the chakras on the left. Seven chakras, same system, same graphic even. And then there's seven energy levels Sleep, dream, awake, integral, divic, realized, and ecstatic. I'm not very happy with these names, but I guess it's the best I could come up with. Got any ideas? <laughs> and then each chakra is given some keywords to correspond to its states and functions in these seven energy levels. So let's start with the sex chakra, Muladhara chakra, all at the bottom. Now, when that chakra is asleep, we're dead. We're zero. We're nothing. We are non-existent because without sex, the body doesn't exist. It doesn't come into being. So uh, lowest or zero energy state uh, for sex, chakra is simply zero, non-existence. But the next one, dream, second energy level in the sex chakra, is ordinary, procreative, missionary position, heterosexual, reproductive sex uh, designed to procreate children. So I guess pretty much everybody has experience of that energy level. <laughs> But then, in the third energy level, which I call awake, really, they, they don't have proper names. They're just numbers. I'm just assigning these words, and um, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. So if anybody has any suggestions, I'm open to that. And that's romantic sex. Sex from the heart. Sex with love. Even could be kinky sex. As long as it's done with love, and romance and commitment, then it's a higher energy level than simply procreative, reproductive sex uh, for making children. But now the next fourth energy level, integral, uh, in the sex chakra manifests as recreational sex, sex for fun, huh? sex in a particular mood that we find very attractive and exciting. Huh? And uh, then in the next higher energy level, I call divic, one reaches one's core fetish or core desire. And this is the image or metaphor of the situation uh, which is most exciting. It's a psychological phenomenon, actually. It has to do with our early patterning and emotional uh, patterns and stuff like that, and also the very, very early sexual experiences and how those pattern us. So the combination of the two gives rise to an image, and that image is like our ideal scene, uh, the perfect seduction or the perfect uh, situation for lovemaking. Uh, like I love to make 
make love outdoors in the woods. Whenever I'm in the woods, I kind of have one eye on, a, on the side of the path, always looking for what would be a nice place to have sex. <laughs> That's the least kinky thing I do. But anyway, the ideal scene or the, the perfect situation for making love is called the core fetish. And it could be anything from going out drinking and dancing to uh, extreme BDSM. It could be anything, whatever your taste is. It's based on your taste. And it's different for everyone. It's very specific. Certain things are super turn-ons and other things are super turn-offs. So this is something you have to get to know about yourself and your partner. So going on, the next level is called realized. And in the sex chakra, that manifests as tantric devotional sex. Now this gets very interesting because it could be in the case of ananya bhakti, it could be having sex with oneself, solo practice, or with a partner, uh, where the partner becomes the incarnation, expression, or personification of the core fetish. This is why it takes a partner to reach these higher states reliably. Yeah. And finally, the highest energy level called ecstatic is kundalini orgasm. More, that means an energy orgasm. It could happen in the body or it could happen in the prana, the, the nadis, the channels, the energy channels. There's supposed to be like 20,000 or 24,000 of them in the human body. And when they become activated at a very high level, one has a kundalini orgasm. It's not only a whole body orgasm. Uh, that's already there in the previous stage. But it's a full energy orgasm with all 24,000 nadis firing at once. It's only happened to me twice. Both times it was with goddess herself. When she was reciprocating my practice of her mantras, Gayatri Mantra and Mahashodashi Mantra. She, her presence was felt, and not that she appeared, I didn't see her, but I felt her. And then she gave me this wonderful energy experience, not only all over my body, all through my body. It's just, it's indescribable. But anyway, these seven energy levels manifest differently in each of the chakras according to their function. So we went over the sex chakra, number one chakra, and the others are similar. And you can go over the chart at your leisure, look at the different categories. If any of them are unclear, please make a comment on the video, or if you're in the Tantra discussion group, uh, bring it up to the group, because if you have a question, or if something is not clear to you, there are probably a bunch of other people with the same issues. Uh, so if you speak out, then we can clarify it for everyone. So uh, asking a good question is a real service, and not only to yourself, uh, but to the teacher and to the community. So if there's any questions, any doubts, whatever, please, Make them known, and we will address them. Huh? I want to take a look at uh, something, uh, because it's very commonly discussed in spiritual circles, which is the Agnya Chakra, Sixth Chakra. And the seven energy states of the Agnya Chakra go from non-perceptive, sleep, in other words, deep sleep, sushupti, through animal uh, consciousness to human consciousness and perception, uh, then to the ontological stage, where one becomes a sadhu, the meta-ontological stage, where one creates ontologies and worlds, to the realized stage, 
where one realizes the root functions of the mind, and finally to Nibbana and beyond Nibbana in the ecstatic stage, the ecstatic energy level. Same energy level that in the sex chakra leads to Kundalini orgasm, leads to self-realization in the Agnya chakra. You see how this all works? According to function. And the other thing I want to get at here is that both this chart and the 4x4 four four matrix we covered in the previous video are actually one chart. They go together like this. So the four states of consciousness, the seven chakras, the seven energy levels of the chakras are all related. Of course, they're all part of one whole, which is you, <laughs> the self, the person, more than just the self, the person, the, the body, the mind, the soul, the spirit, the energy, everything that is you. And this is a system that is set up in the beginning of creation <clears throat> by Shakti. She's the mother. She is the uh, well, actually, Shiva is the Adi Purusha, the first person, the original human being or human-like being. And from them and their uh, union, then all the other types of beings in the universe are born and descend. Huh? They're called descendants for a good reason, because by the time we reach the ordinary human form, of course, our powers and our consciousness and everything is very limited compared with those original forms. But we can remove the blocks, the upadis, the vasanas, the sankharas, and, and all the other blocks that keep us from seeing our real nature, which is nothing but Brahman. And the way we do it is by systematically bringing all seven chakras to the highest energy level. And this is what Tantra is all about. If you can do this, self-realization is guaranteed. Why? Because it is the natural function of the chakras and the things that are keeping them from their natural function are the blocks. And when we remove the blocks, the natural functions manifest automatically, spontaneously, effortlessly, frictionlessly, without any work or effort. So all the effort in sadhana, whether tantric or otherwise, is actually directed simply toward removing these blocks. Uh, so that's going to be the topic going forward. How do we remove the blocks in the various chakras, beginning with the sex chakra, because the sex chakra is the energy source for all the others. So just like, you know, if the battery on your phone is at 5%, <laughs> you're not going to be able to take much video. In the same way, if your sex chakra is closed or damaged or if you become neurotic or whatever, you will not have the energy available for the higher functions, the higher energy states. Makes sense, doesn't it? So stay with us as we continue uh, to go deeper into this subject. And gradually, now that we have built a terminological foundation, the ontological space of terminology uh, that so we can talk about these things. <laughs> Let's talk about them and start to go over specific techniques that can help everyone uh, have a richer, fuller life and ultimately reach the highest realization, enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.